Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Annalisa and I do videos about art and videos about books. Today I am working on a watercolor painting, which is my main medium. I'm not sure exactly what inspired this, except I have been wanting to paint more dragons recently. And so I decided to go full fantasy crazy and just draw a dragon with a castle in the foreground. So right now you can see me uh, filling in the background and I did that using one of my bigger brushes. I really like these bullet shaped brushes because I find that I can do small little fine strokes but I can also use them for bigger splotchy strokes like this and I've also been enjoying doing uh, backgrounds that uh, have visible brush strokes lately so I decided to make this background by mixing various blues and purples uh, and using the side of my bullet shaped brush. I'm sure there's a proper name for that, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> and sort of just blobbing it on there and sort of going with <laughs> what I felt like at the time. And I really like how that turned out because I was going directly from the palette and not mixing any colors before they got on the page and uh, I wasn't using as much water as I sometimes do, the colors came out really vibrant and I think that looks really nice especially because it is sort of a contrast to everything that is in the foreground. I kind of did in various shades of gray or with gray in the background, which as you can see, the castle, I did a base layer of gray, and then in a couple places I did uh, another layer of blue in a light wash over that, and then later on you'll see me do a light wash of black over the tower that is farthest in the background. So I did a few different color washes over different parts of the castle to try to differentiate them. My cats are fighting. I'm, I'm a little distracted. Okay, it's good. It's good. Uh, the little one rolled over. Everything's fine. So uh, I did these various colored washes to differentiate different parts of the castle and then I started working on the sort of pedestal that the castle is on. Uh, kind of peak fantasy I decided to stick this castle on a mountain spire thing uh, that's quite unrealistic and is thinner in the middle than it is at the top, but I was having fun and then I put sort of a winding road around the bottom of it, which you'll see me add a little bit of detailing to later. And now, of course, I am getting to work on the dragon. I really enjoyed working on this dragon with this brush. I just felt, I don't know, so elegant while I was making these lines, which is why I slowed it down to real time for this section. I just really enjoyed using the dark, condensed black watercolor with this, um, with this brush. It just felt so pleasant and... I was more sure of my brush strokes than I usually am, <laughs> so that was fun and unexpected. And I went for a very simple design for the dragon this time. It's basically a silhouette, uh, but I did add some highlights later on so you can tell it. It's not just a silhouette, it's just a fully black dragon. <laughs> and he's just flying past the castle and he's quite large since he's behind the castle and he's still this big compared to it. And so you can't see any of the fine details, you can just see there's a big black thing with wings. <laughs> and then of course we get to the bricks. The bricks, <laughs> there were so many. Uh, I didn't film all of it because I thought it was quite, it would be quite boring to watch seeing as how, how boring it was to do because I did individual bricks on this castle, the entire castle except for one little section of it that I made wooden. And I did three layers of bricks. <laughs> you can see me laying down the first layer of brownish bricks now on top of that gray background. You can also see that I have done some white outlining of parts of the tower so that I could see what I was doing because I noticed earlier on that I just painted over some of the extra little pokey outy parts of the towers as if they were part of the regular tower because I couldn't see where they were as I was concentrating so hard on uh, making the regular bricks. I also did a similar thing on the tower tops just using blue and black instead of 
various browns and grays. There's that wooden part I was talking about. And now, uh, because I wasn't concentrating all that much while I was making the pedestal, I didn't put sort of parts along the outside so that it would look like a road was coming around the edge. So I had to add those on and kind of try to smoosh it in so it looked like it was of all one piece with the uh, with the rest of the pedestal. And as I'm doing this, I keep switching back and forth from different parts of the painting so that I can work on them while the others dry. And so now you see me doing the second layer of bricks. On the foreground towers, I did a second layer of this yellowy brown mustard colored stuff that I have. While on the background tower and on the walls between the towers, my second layer was black that I blotted off so it was kind of an unsaturated black. And then on all the sections, I put a third layer of light blue to kind of give it, to kind of make it look like there was blue lighting and so that it would be kind of moonlight-esque and be a little less uh, pure brown. And I really liked how that turned out. I wasn't sure about it because I don't usually like to uh, use contrasting colors close to each other like that, but I think it kind of turned out a little bit like daubism or pointillism where you have all these different splotches of colors instead of them being mixed together but when you're far away from the painting it looks like it's kind of all homogenous so I feel like it worked out like that because the little bricks are painted so small <laughs> and then I went back and added some details to make the road look more like a road so I basically just added a fence around it so that it looks like uh, you could go up there maybe without falling off and that also took forever and a lot of going back into <laughs> the black paint because it got unsaturated very quickly. And then we have uh, the line art. I wanted to keep my line art to a minimum as I've been trying to do with a lot of my watercolors because the loose look of watercolors where they sort of just meet without having hard lines between them I think looks really nice. And so I tried out various colors that aren't as severe as black like brown and gray and I think those worked really well. I did a little bit of outlining in black where the colors were already very dark, but mostly I kept it to lighter colors. Oh, by the way, you're going to do, see something else I did with my pen only when I show you the full painting. I didn't film me actually doing it, so uh, later you'll see a little cat perched on the middle uh, tower there, the sort of squat one. And then we get to the highlights, which tends to be my favorite part of the painting. It just adds something so quickly, makes such a vast improvement so quickly, and I like being able to see progress like that. So a little to the dragon, a little to the towers. I hope you all had a very Merry Christmas if you celebrate it. I believe Hanukkah is still going on now. Uh, happy Hanukkah if that's what you're celebrating and happy anything else you might enjoy celebrating as well as i hope you have a good christmas tide because that's what's going on now and also a happy new year though i will be coming out with i think just one more video maybe two videos before the end of the year and there's a little kitty so thank you so much for watching and i will be seeing you in the next video bye